I hope everybody's excited as we are. You know, it's uh, it's time of year that it's the only time now that you you're not in school. So we got you get a chance to build your football team. We have two weeks now that we don't have to worry about school. So it's all football and. Nowadays, except for the few few days you have during bowl practice, it's the only time during the year that you get it. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for guys to grow and develop as players. I know our guys have done a really good job this summer. Uh, Coach Fitz has done a, an outstanding job getting these guys in shape. Our training staff getting the guys healthy, uh, ready for fall camp. We're excited about getting going. Um, we're going to have 109 guys um, to start off with. Uh, we've got one that's not here yet. Uh, everybody in our program will be participating in practice. Uh, we will have a couple of guys that will be a little bit limited to start with, but they're building their way into the first scrimmage. You know, um, we, we talked about Trey Smith. Um, he, Trey is going to He's going to participate in everything we do except non-contact, and then he'll, he'll be released uh, probably August the, the 19th or 20th, somewhere around that date right there. So um, we'll be excited to have everybody out there and get going. I know there's a lot of guys who didn't participate in spring um, that were injured that will be out there that will be available. So I know these guys are hungry and ready to get started. Uh, we do have one uh, signee that's not here yet. It's got a couple of things. Um, that he's working on, but uh, he'll be here as soon as he can get it done. So uh, and then we'll have all 110 guys here. You know, when you when you start fall camp, you know, you, you got to figure out what kind of goals that you're trying to get accomplished. Uh, I think it's important that you set goals. Uh, for us, you know, the big thing is, is we want to we wanna learn what to do. We want to learn how to do it, and we're going to learn why it's important to do it that way. I think to have success as, as a football player uh, and as a football team, uh, you've got to have knowledge. Um, some of that comes with experience. Um, some of it comes in film study. Some of it's just getting out there with repetitions every day. So we want to be a smart football team. Uh, we want to understand what we're trying to get done, and we want to understand what our opponents are, are trying to do to stop us or or to create plays on us. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a good program, you got to have discipline in your program, and there's no better way to do it than in fall camp. Um, you know, everybody wants to do it the right way. Uh, lots of folks can do it the right way some of the time, but if you look at the most successful teams, they figure out they have discipline and they and they find a way to be able to do it all the times, even in the most adverse situations. You got to develop mental and physical toughness. You know, it's easy to sit here and talk about it, uh, and everybody does. But to me, if you're going to get it, you've got to, you've got to experience it, and that's something that that we've got to do. We've got to challenge our our guys in camp um, and get where we understand that. To me, fundamentals. You know, uh, just the basic fundamentals. Whether it's uh, stepping with the right foot, you got your eyes in the right place, using the the right. Uh, hand placement, running the right routes uh, at the, the right depth, you know, ball security, um, just all those things that go into it. You know, there's, there's things that when it, you get tired, things get tough, you're going to go back to the fundamentals, the habits that you've created, and we've got to do a really good job in camp doing that. Um, playing with effort, uh, that has nothing to do with talent. Uh, I think the standard that you, you set, you're going to set it early on. It, it starts in off-season conditioning um, through spring ball. And then I think when you get to, to fall camp, you're going to have guys who've not actually participated with the team yet. It'll be their first practices. So the standard, the expectations of what kind of effort that you're going to play with, um, you know, that's something that you've got to do early on, and it's got to continue throughout the year. You know, we've got to be able to, to come together as a team. You know, it's probably the beauty about this game is somewhere every everybody across the country is sitting in a locker room getting ready for the first day they reported, um, getting ready to get started, and everybody's zero, to, zero and zero. So, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to control what happens down the road. So building your identity, creating your identity, figuring out who you are, coming together as a team, um, that's, that's got to be a big focus for us. You know, there's opportunities in fall camp. We're going to have 25 practices. I think one of the things that our guys are, are fired up about is they have an opportunity. Uh, the way we practice, 
everybody gets the same opportunities to do it and they'll get a chance to 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 show what they can or cannot do you know we tell the guys all the time um you know you you guys control who plays we don't how you perform on pra on the practice field how do you prepare uh how do you work in the off season uh, that's going to dictate who plays, and I think everybody here feels like they have an opportunity. We have lots of competition, which is great. Uh, we needed competition, and, and we're going to have it this fall camp. So it will it, it'll be exciting for me to see how guys respond um, and who can be consistent in their performance day in and day out. So we're we're ready to get going, uh, and with that, I'll take any questions. Jeremy, from having watched video and going through the spring, do you, you think you have a good idea of the team's strengths and weaknesses now? Well, I think you have an idea of, of where, we need to, where we need to go from. Um, you know, I think our team has really improved um, in the last three months in understanding what our expectations are. Um, you know, I think when we first got here, everything's new. So, you know, the first time you do anything, it's, it's a first time. So the more you do something, obviously, the more confidence you gain in it, the more familiarity you get. So uh, I look for a, a lot of improvement with our guys as fall camp goes. Coach, two things. One, what are you – I know you mentioned your goals. What are you most anxious to see? And two – just a little clarification on Chance Hall. Will he be in the 109 who will go, or is he a guy that's going to be limited on the side? Where are you with him right now? Well, Chance, is, Chance has been released. He's, he's going to be practicing again. But you're talking about a guy that didn't play any football last year, didn't participate in spring. He started this summer working, uh, and he's progressed his way into to being able to practice, I think, just being smart. It, it, it wouldn't be smart of us to throw him out there and he takes every rep every day. So I think we want to work our way in and we have a plan um, with our training staff, the reps that he'll take. Uh, and I know he's really itching to get going. So, um, but we have a plan and we're going, we're going to execute the plan. Uh, how do you expect spring to compare to the, what you guys are about to do in preseason? You guys did a lot of moving guys around, equal reps, that type of thing. Do you anticipate that changing in preseason camp? Well, I think in spring we're really trying to figure out who could play what, and we had some guys that possibly could play either side of the ball. Uh, I think we've, we've got that set where we're going to keep guys moving forward, so that's, that's going to be a plus. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll practice the exact same way, so we'll two-spot everything, and we'll, we'll have four groups going, so everybody will get the same amount of reps. Grant and Vince. You, you mentioned in Atlanta a couple weeks ago that you had to get Juwan Jennings well. Uh, is he clear? Is he good to go? Or, or is that still an ongoing process? Juwan will be one of the guys that will be a little bit limited. He's cleared, ready to practice. But again, he's not participated in anything in a football activity, you know, in, um, since last fall. So he, he's, he's ready to go. But we, we're going we're gonna to limit his reps and build it up as, as fall camp goes. Coach, what are the most important traits and characteristics of your cornerback specifically and DBs that you're looking for to decide on who gets some of those more prominent roles for you? Well, I think with any position, you kind of got to know what you're looking for at, at corner. To me, the first thing is you got to be able to play man to man. Uh, you've got to be able to play the ball because um, there's lots of balls out on the perimeter. You got to be a good tackler. You know, and I think if, if, you can, if you can tackle in space, you can play man-to-man, -man, you can play the ball. And then you got to talk about intangibles. Do you, are you a smart football player? Do you know how to use your help? Um, you know, so I think that's the most important things. Hey, Jeremy, just to clarify on, on Trey, you mentioned August 19th or 20th, maybe he'd be fully cleared. In the meantime, is he cleared for the non-contact work but not contact work? Yeah, Trey's been doing everything for the last three months. So unlike some of these guys, a Chance Hall who's not participated because he's not, been, not being cleared to, to practice yet. So for Chance, you got a guy that, that's, that's not done all the running, not done all the lifting. Trey's not in that boat. Trey's done everything. He just can't have contact. If I could 
good follow up. Todd Kelly Jr., will he be among the limited or is he a full person? No, he's full go. Coach Brent talked about you being possibly anxious to see some things. The offensive line, you seem to be a lot deeper now than you were, you know, a couple of months ago. Do you feel like that unit can go to be more of a strength for the offense as you get into fall camp? Well, we're bringing in 20 offensive linemen in fall camp. Um, obviously, we know the situation with Trey, so there'll be 19 guys participating for the first two weeks. Uh, a couple of them on a, on a limited basis, they'll build up as fall camp goes. Uh, but I think we have lots of competition. We've got plenty of guys that are capable. Um, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Corey and Jesse. Coach, uh, what will be your approach to using the redshirt rule? Um, like, you know, will the younger players get more time early or try to build them late? Or what would be your general approach? Well, we're, we're going to worry about winning football games, and we're going to play the guys that can help us win games. Um, I think it's something that as you look down the road, you know, there's been times over the years you've been a little, little bit hesitant um, about possibly using a guy. Say you get a couple of guys hurt at a position, they're going to be out for a few weeks. Um, you know, what do, you, do you burn this – freshman's red shirt by playing him in two games and then knowing when these two guys get back they're going to move back I think it will give you an opportunity and give you some options down the road and then there's some things to think about toward the end of the season uh, one last thing on Trey Jeremy where are you guys going to start him out at is he going to start playing at tackle or guard obviously he played both positions a year ago and then just secondly uh, what kind of attracted you to Tyson Helton and why you kind of picked him to be your first year offensive coordinator? Well, the one thing about Trey, Trey can play multiple positions. He did that last year. Um, we would like to get him in a position and leave him there where he can have success and gain confidence. The good thing is before we insert Trey, we can, we're going to have two weeks of practice, so we're going to figure out where do we need him, if that makes sense. So, but Tyson Helton, I've known Tyson for a long time. Uh, he was he was recruiting Hoover High School um, from Memphis University. It was the first time I met him. Uh, then he went to UAB, which was there in Birmingham, and and Will Friend was on the staff. So I spent a lot of time over there. Um, been very impressed with him since since that time. Uh, when he would come to our practices, we always had a lot of talent. Um, he seemed to be a very good evaluator uh, to figure out who the right guys were and weren't. Um, you know, so and you just kind of follow his career and, and you know, we've been closely connected over the years. So um, he's done a fantastic job wherever he's been. Coach, two junior college guys who just got here this summer. What are your outlook for uh, Dominic Wood Anderson and um, Emmett Gooden? I'm, I'm sorry. Your, your two junior college guys, uh, Dominic Woods and Emmett, and Emmett. What are you, what are you seen from this summer? Seen from the, the seen from them this summer? Well, they're they're big men. Uh, they're going to be, you know, a couple of years older than a freshman coming in, so they do have some experience. I think they have opportunity to contribute. Um, you know, for them, we'll be learning. You know, what's the system? What's the expectations? Um, you know, so I think having a little bit of experience in junior college will help them there with the transition. But both guys are talented, um, and they they kind of meet the size and speed criteria that we were looking for. Evan and Steve. Jeremy, Bryce Thompson was a guy that you guys brought in late. He put up some pretty big numbers on offense in high school. Kind of what went into the decision to play him on defense, and will he, he get a look in the return game as well? Well, to me, the probably – one thing that you, you need to be able to figure out is how to get your best players on the field. Um, you know, when you got 120 guys, and a lot, you got guys like Bryce, you got guys like Alante uh, that have played both sides of the ball, they, they, they could play wide receiver, they could play tailback, they could play anywhere in the secondary. So you're trying to figure out what's the best combination to, to produce the best team. Um, we felt like just where we were at, that it would be best to start him off at corner um, and then go from there. Steve? I think 
you had mentioned earlier that you're planning to go to that one voice policy where the assistance would be available today and I would assume not the rest of the regular season I'm just trying to clarify if that's the case and also what made you decide to go with that philosophy I know you're familiar with it from prior schools as well well most everywhere that I've worked it's been that way and I've appreciated it as an assistant coach so I could work on our opponents and not come out here and hang out with you guys so uh, with that experience, I, I think that's, that's good. Um, also, I think it's important that when you're, you're talking, you want one message. And I think if you have one message, um, at least you know what the message will exactly be. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Jeremy, uh, Marquez mentioned a couple weeks ago that Juwan got up and, and apologized in front of the team. Uh, what was that moment like, and maybe why was that something that was important? Well, I wasn't there, so I don't know anything about it. So you'd have to talk to them about that. Wes Rucker in the back. Jeremy, I know you mentioned Alante a little bit earlier. What is it about him? Is there something unique in the way he, he's kind of built or, or the way that he is mentally to make you feel like he can be a guy who could be listed on both sides of the ball, or, or is that just more of a need thing? Well, we're going to start him off at defensive back. Um, he has the ability to play wide receiver. He could play either side of the ball. Uh, I think when you look at, again, trying to figure out how we get the best guys – on the field, how do we create the best team? Uh, we're going to start him out at cornerback, and I uh, think it creates a lot of uh, competition. Uh, he's a big guy that can run, play the ball. He's instinctive. So um, we've talked about it. We looked at him at both sides during the spring, and we just felt like that, that the best place for him to start off this fall would be defensive back. Uh, Jeremy, when would you like to know who you want to start out at quarterback, and when do you feel like that will uh, you, you'd want to announce something on that? I, I didn't hear the first part. Uh, when do, well, how, how do you want to handle the quarterbacks? When do you think you'd want to have a decision on that, and how do you think you'll, you'll handle that, uh, I guess, with us? I think the quarterbacks are no different than any other position. Um, you know, you're going to have the same amount of competition. We'll be repping four guys there. Uh, they'll all get the same opportunity. You know, if it's kind of like – Outside linebacker, if you got two guys that are about the same, then you play them both. If you got one guy that's a little better, then you play him, and this guy comes in when he gets tired or whatever. Uh, I think the same thing at quarterback. You know, if we have somebody that asserts himself, you know, it might be three days into fall camp, it might be six weeks into the season, okay? But we got to figure out who gives us the best opportunity, and they'll control that, not us. And also, how does this program right now compared to what you encountered at, at Alabama in 2007 when you first got there? Well, to me, there's probably some similarities. Um, there's, you know, we got a very hungry fan base. It's starting over. Uh, I can draw on the experiences a little bit looking back at it. Um, you know, we've got guys here on our in our program that um, have some experience, and we got a lot of guys that don't. So it's starting over. Everything's new. Uh, I think everybody that's involved in the program is excited about it. Uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. It starts with administration, and we've got great administrators. They've given us everything that we need to have success. Um, so we're ready to get started. And I think um, over the next couple of years, you'll, you'll see vast improvement. Follow-up question on the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, when it comes to whittling down the competition at that position, how do you go about doing that, and and you know what will be some of the determining factors in, in whittling down that competition? To me, the most important thing is is just when you get the ball, what are we doing with it? Okay, are we get, are we throwing it to the other team? Are we staying in the right plays? Are we in every possession with a kick? Uh, what kind of impact do you have on your teammates? You know, it's interesting you can look because uh, quarterbacks come in all shapes and sizes. Look at the NFL uh, and over the history of the great quarterbacks, they all look different. Uh, so 
I think it is. It's taking your team and, and being able to move the ball, being productive, rallying everybody around you. So um, to do that, you got to have competitive situations. They've got to be put in situations where they have an opportunity to separate themselves, and, and that will happen. Jeremy, obviously you brought Cal Phillips to SEC media days, but what have you seen from some of the other senior defensive linemen in, in shot title and Alexis Johnson this offseason? You know, those guys, we have three guys up front that are seniors, or four. Paul Baines is a senior also. So um, we're going to need those guys to play well. Uh, you know, in this league, I think if you look at the teams that have age on them, um, lots of times you can kind of – Look at it, it. Sometimes it equals success. Uh, so we need guys. Those four guys are the. I mean, they're the only seniors we got on our defense, uh, with the exception of up front with Kongbo. Uh, so we need those guys to play well. Could you envision playing those two guys together in certain situations? Which two yeah, guys? Shy and Alexis. Yeah, I hope to play all of them. Talking about the same time. At the same time. Yeah, I hope. Last couple, of Brent, John, and Daniel. Coach, you said that you liked what, kind of what this team had done the last couple of months and kind of figuring out the expectations. Did you attribute that to just experience with Coach Fitzgerald? Is that a sign of leadership on your team that you like? What do you attribute kind of their change the last few weeks to the point that you're liking what you see? Probably familiarity with the coaches and the players, I think. Uh, when you talk about messages from the top down, I think anywhere you go in our program, they're hearing the same stuff over and over again. Uh, I think that breeds confidence. Uh, you know, as you get to know people, you, you, there's probably some trustworthiness coming in there a little bit. To me, it's hard to, to walk into a room of a team full of guys and you don't know any of them and, and you know, to figure out who they are. I'm sure the same thing goes with us. So um, I, I think our guys have bought in. I think they've done a fantastic job in the classroom, uh, in the weight room. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're eating, they're growing. Uh, so our nutritionist is doing a really good job. So I just think, I think they're a little more confident in which way we're going as a program. Jeremy, you mentioned a quarterback's attributes that you're looking for. Did, did uh, Jalen Hurts at uh, Alabama pretty much demonstrate all of those when, when you were there? You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not at Alabama anymore, but while I was there, um, both of those quarterbacks, uh, Tua and Jalen, were great competitors, uh, done everything that they were asked to do in the program, and both are very talented young men and good people. Coach, what led to your decision to move over the summer to move Jonathan Kongbo from defensive line back to linebacker? Well, I don't think it's as big a move as everybody would make out to be. Um, when we play 4-3, he plays defensive end, which is what he has always played. So if we play 3-4, then that means he'll move this far and play outside linebacker. So there's not that much difference in it. Um, Again, it's trying to figure out to get your best combination of guys on the field. Um, he's done a really good job this summer learning the position. Uh, smart guy, and he's worked hard. So we'll see how he does in camp. Thank you, Coach.